To start these conversations is definitely now. Senator Conroy. Uh, thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I rise to make some further remarks on the interim report of the Senate Select Committee on the National Broadband Network. This report is an indictment on the NBN strategic review. When announcing the strategic review, the minister said, and I quote, I just want the plain and varnished facts. We do not want spin. We do not want the company to tell us what they think we might want to hear. But I regret to inform the Senate that this is exactly what has happened. The report confirms that the MBN strategic review was undertaken by personnel and advisers handpicked by the minister with no independent scrutiny or verification of its final report. This, Mr Acting Deputy President, stands in stark contrast to the 2013 NBN Co corporate plan, which was based on signed contracts and independently audited by KPMG and Ernst and & Young. The minister has been told exactly what he wanted to hear. This is no way to spend $40 billion of taxpayers' money and it is no way to plan a broadband network for all Australians. This minister's patchwork quilt of broadband technologies will be a financial disaster. Let's have a look at the strategic review. It either ignores or fudges when it comes to the favoured what's called the MTM model. The strategic review contains no field data to support the MTM model. It relies on nothing more than international benchmarks and estimates. The committee report finds that the strategic review significantly underestimates the costs of the MTM compared to a new fibre build. It underestimates the costs of having to operate two extra fixed line networks. It underestimates the costs of having to maintain last century's copper technology. It underestimates the costs of migration processes, of IT systems, of running voice services over a network that Mbienco does not own. Across this mess of a broadband plan, the costs are always, at every single opportunity, underestimated. And what happens, Mr Acting Deputy President, when it comes to the revenues? Well, the committee found that the strategic review overestimates the revenues possible on the MTM compared to fibre. That's right, Mr Acting Deputy President. The strategic review underestimates the costs and then overestimates the revenues. NBNCO's caretaker advice to government made it clear that the minister's plans would not be able to generate the revenues that Labor's NBN would generate. FTTN is an inferior broadband technology. It cannot deliver the same products that fibre can. The same is true of HFC networks. No gigabit services in these footprints. No dedicated information rates an inferior multicast product, no products that Australians can easily migrate to when they need better quality broadband, and most outrageously, given the promises, best efforts when it comes to download speeds. I mean, those opposite, Mr Turnbull made great claims. He will guarantee delivery of 25 meg down, he said. And what did the chair of his company say in a Senate estimates hearing? I can't give any such guarantee. What did the new CEO say of NBNCO when asked to guarantee Mr Turnbull's promise? Well, I wouldn't put my name to that, my signature to that. So, Mr President, what we have here is a fraud on the Australian public, an absolute fraud. $40 billion. Those opposites who sit there chuckling right now are going to spend $40 billion on a network Order. that you can't guarantee a Order. download or an upload speed. Order. $40 Sit down, Senator billion. Conroy. There will be order in this chamber. Senator Conroy. Mr Acting Deputy President. $40 billion to deliver something that can't guarantee a speed down or a speed up. 
What a bunch of geniuses! And just for good measure, they are the only company, the only country in the world that are going to buy or trying to buy a copper network. You know what most companies around the world are doing with their copper network? They're selling it because it's worth more for the scrap value than the technology value. There are companies out there buying telcos, copper networks, to rip them out of the ground and sell them on the spot market. But no, not in this country. In this country, we're going to buy the network and we're going to keep using it. Unbelievable. What a disgraceful waste of taxpayer dollars. And what we see, Mr President, though, because in the last election campaign, those of said this is about trust. This is about trust. All promises and guarantees before the election, but after the election, no guarantee from anybody who actually understands the technology. No guarantee. No guarantee. And most importantly, Mr. President, most importantly, Mr. President, the MTM delivers inferior upload speeds that will disadvantage the millions of small businesses in Australia. That's right. They're going to spend $40 billion to disadvantage small businesses, particularly in regional and rural Australia. But despite all of this, despite all of this Mr Acting Deputy President, the strategic review somehow assumes that the MTN will generate a similar revenue to an all-fibre rollout. They can't deliver the top-end products. They can't deliver the upload speeds the small businesses need, but they can make the same money. Absolute geniuses. So, of particular concern to those of us on this side of the chamber is that the coalition's plans, and this is another pernicious attack on ordinary Australians, the coalition's plans state that they want to see Labor's fibre to the home broadband rolled out in, and I quote, high value suburbs. High value suburbs. So, if you're rich enough to be able to uh, spend a bit of money on broadband, you get the best network. You get the best network. But if you're in the not so high value suburbs, you get the second rate Malcolm Turnbull, Mr. Malcolm Turnbull network. The second rate network. Because that is what Malcolm, Mr. Turnbull is condemning the Australian public to. It effectively means that people with more money will access the best broadband network in the world and people with less money will have to make do with an inferior broadband network. This is a betrayal in the 21st century of the most vital piece of infrastructure we need into the future. But, Mr Acting Deputy President, Mr Turnbull has put forward his multi-technology mess as some kind of antidote to what he describes in the other place as Conrovianism, Labor's fibre to the home NBN. Conrovianism. It's a disease he talked about in the other place. Well, the big and exciting news for Mr Turnbull is the world's best broadband technology that is being adopted around the world in New Zealand, in Singapore, in China, in Japan, in Korea, in Spain in France and Indonesia. Yes, Mr Acting Deputy President, Indonesia as well. Google. Mr Turnbull claims he knows more about this than the guys at Google. Well, I know who I'm putting my money on. Google is building fibre to the home networks in Kansas City, Provo and Austin, and is planning to expand to other cities across the United States. But Unfortunately, Conrovianism seems to be approaching pandemic levels around the world because all those countries are building fibre networks. Not one of them, not one of them is buying a copper network off an incumbent telco. Not one of them. So I want to be very clear about this, Mr Acting Deputy President. Labor decided to build fibre to the home because the advice of the experts told us that fibre to the node was not a cost-effective path. The strategic review actually reveals that a committed and active management can deliver—this is in Mr Turnbull's own document—can deliver a fibre to the home network on the basis of the last considered corporate plan, 2013-16. The strategic review 
has not made the case for a two-stage build as proposed by the coalition. The committee's interim report recommends that MBN co-management be unshackled to continue rolling out fibre to the premise free from Mr Turnbull's political interference. I recommend the report to the senators, and I'm sure I'll be revisiting this issue.